What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tip for you. So today we're going to talk about five tips for navigating around in your SketchUp model. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this is a model of New York City that I created using Placemaker. Placemaker is a city creation extension for SketchUp. Um, I created this whole thing in less than five minutes. So it's super easy to use um, and it's super fun to use as well. Um, so if you want to give that a try, you can download a free trial at the sketchupessentials.com slash placemaker. I do want to note that I am an affiliate for Placemaker. So if you do end up purchasing that, I will receive a small commission. But that's how I created this model. And so I want to go through a couple quick tips for um, the best way to navigate around in a model using the first person tools and some other tools as well. So tip one is quickly setting camera orientation with the position camera tool. So the position camera tool can be found over here in the large tool set. And if you don't have that, you can go to view toolbars and check the box for large tool set for that to show up. So the position camera tool is this icon right here. It's basically a person standing on a red X. And um, I think a lot of people know that you can click on a point in your model in order to uh, navigate or, or in order to set your camera at that location. Um, what you may not know is you can also select the view that your camera is going to have by doing this as well. So you can do that by clicking and dragging. So you can click on the little person icon right here. And then what you do is you click and drag. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and hold. So that sets my first point and then I'm going to drag my mouse. And you can see how this little point shows up um, wherever my cursor goes while I have my mouse button held down. Well, that's what your camera is going to look at. So in this case, if I click and drag this way, it's going to set my camera right here and it'll set my camera looking at that point that I had my mouse over just like that. So you can see how that quickly set where my mouse button was when I came in here and did that. So, you know, same thing if I wanted to set my camera right here and look up at these buildings, I can just do that really quickly. And then this automatically drops you into look around mode so you can click and drag to set what your camera is looking at. So the next thing I want to talk about is setting your eye height. That's tip number two. So in addition to being able to set your camera orientation with those tools, you can also set your eye height or your height above ground. So like right now that dropped me in here and you can see how it put my eye height in here at six inches. So I'm not very high up off the ground right now. So I've got a little bit of a like ground plane clipping going on and everything else. What you can do is you can tell this either with the position camera tool active or the look around tool active you can type in the height above ground that you'd like for your camera so in this case I'm gonna say six feet well, what that's gonna do is that's gonna move my camera up so that it's six feet above the ground so what this does is this gives you a real idea of scale um, in your model so and you can do the same thing for an interior model like for example the interior example I have is a model I downloaded from the 3D warehouse it's a Titanic model um, it's the grand staircase from Titanic um, by Cohen J so and this is one of the cool models that you can download from the 3D warehouse but I can do the same thing I can set my camera tool just like this so I can bring it in here so that I'm looking at this uh, at the top of this grand staircase but then I can type in like 5 foot 10 or whatever um, to put my camera 5 foot 10 inches above the ground so this is very useful for creating like actual to scale stuff in your model right here so let's say you wanted this from a little shorter perspective you could type in 4 foot 10 and hit the enter key and drop your camera down a little bit. So you can set your height above ground um, using these tools. So and then the third tip I wanna talk about is using walk around to keep your camera at a set height. So sometimes it can be a little difficult to navigate around using the orbit tool. I will say SketchUp's orbit tool is probably the best uh, moving around orbiting tool that I've seen in a 3D modeling program, but it still can kind of like drop you into some faces and stuff like this sometimes. Well, what you can do is you can use the walk around tool, and what that does is that kind of locks your camera height um, above the ground, and you can adjust the eye height with this tool active as well. But now if I click and drag forward or back, um, it's gonna move my camera forward and back without moving it up and down. So, and you can also hold the shift key and click and drag to move up or down 
or left and right but what it does is it really gives you a fine control over your camera so what I can do here because it has collision detection on is I can run into these steps and it'll push me up these steps just like this when I move around so what this does is this really gives me some kind of like pinpoint accuracy on the inside of my model so that's a tip for when you're working with interiors or when you're working with your exterior model as well if you want to keep your camera height same level above ground and still kind of move around like this the best way to do that is going to be to use the walk around tool you can see how even as I click and drag through this city it's keeping my eye height at five foot six inches so this is probably the best way to navigate around in first person is using the walk around tool so tip four is to adjust your field of view so a lot of the time especially in interior shots um, when you set your camera to a certain point like if I set this to look up at the top of the uh, if I set this to look at the top of the staircase like this again, um, sometimes your camera doesn't pick up as much as you'd like it to. Um, by default, it picks up a certain amount of stuff. That's called your field of view. But you can adjust that using the zoom tool. So the little magnifying glass over here in your large tool set. So you can adjust your field of view to pick up more stuff. So when I click on this tool, for example, if you look down in the corner, it says my field of view is 35 degrees. Um, well, what you can do is you can type in something like 55 degrees, and you can see how this picks up more stuff when you do that. So 35 degrees is kind of the default, but you can either type in a new field of view, or you can hold the shift key with the zoom tool active and then click and drag, and that'll adjust your field of view. You do have to be careful because as your field of view gets bigger, your image starts distorting a little bit, but you can definitely use this to pick up more stuff, which is great for interior shots. So that's, that's a super key thing that you need to be able to do, especially if you're working with interiors. So adjusting your field of view is tip number four. And then tip number five is saving your views. So if you have a view that you like, save it in a scene. So in order to do that, all you have to do is navigate until you have a view that you like, and then go up to view, animation, add scene. And what that'll do is that'll save all of your camera information in a single scene, just like this. And then you can go to your tray and use the scene manager to organize all of this stuff. So like for example, now that I have this scene, this is the scene I just created, I can call this one bottom of staircase. And that'll save your field of view, that'll save your camera location, that'll save all this stuff as long as all these boxes are checked. And you can see how when I adjusted the name of this, just like this, it adjusts the name up here as well. So I can adjust it over here and then it'll show up on my scenes just like this. And what you can do is you can come in here and you can set up multiple different views that you like and instead of having to navigate back to them later when you need them, just create scenes for each view that you need. So in this case, this is my scene two, we'll just call this top of staircase. And so this is especially useful for when you're working with interiors, but you can also use it on exteriors as well. Like for example, and I don't know any of the roads in, the New, York, in New York City, but you could come in here and you could create a view looking down a certain, a certain road. So like for example, if you wanted a view looking down this road right here, what you could do is you could navigate to it, just like this. You could set your camera up, and then you could come in here and you could just click add scene, and then you could name this whatever your roadway is. So you could name this roadway one, you could name it whatever you want, but you could keep everything kind of active in here. The one thing you do want to know is sometimes you have to be careful that all of these boxes are checked especially the camera location because some of these when you use placemaker it just brings them in and it just turns things on and off but it doesn't save your camera location so it's got your buildings your water your roads all on different layers so you want to make sure that the scenes that you add are keeping the scenes that you add are keeping all those things so you could do the same thing you could navigate down to this road right here, set your camera angle so you're looking up at this building, and then you could name this one Roadway 2. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to quickly go back to the scenes that you like. So 
I've, I've seen projects where you end up with dozens of different views in here, but that way you don't have to navigate back every time you need it. You can just click on the scenes and same thing goes for my Titanic model right here. I can go from bottom of staircase to top of staircase without having to navigate around and try to find the views that I used before. So that's my five tips for navigating around your SketchUp model. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Um, did I leave anything off this list that you're using? Um, did you like this stuff? Did you know about all of it? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider visiting my support me page on my website. That's got everything from SketchUp extensions that you can purchase to links to my Patreon page. Just a few different ways to support the show and help me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. But in either case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.